and um, I'm going to be uh, facilitating this activity. So what we're going to uh, start with is, um, let me, is, can we all see the slide for the activity? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so we're going to start with um, an identity map. And what we're going to do for this activity, is think of all the different ways that we can identify ourselves. So it could be related to appearance or physical characteristics, background, beliefs or values, experiences, personal traits, how we spend our time, things that we like or don't like, roles, anything at all that you feel identifies who you are. Um, so I'm going to show you an example of um, my colleague here, Mariah's um, identity map, where she's used a lot of different, as you can see, a lot of different markers to identify herself. Um, and there's no right or wrong here. So it depends on what you believe identifies who you are. Um, and so uh, once we have that done, what we're doing now, we've sent off um, everyone. Everyone has now created their identity maps and um, we're choosing one or two of the identity markers that we've used in our maps that we feel are most important to us and that really identify who we are. Um, so everyone in the breakout rooms are now doing that and we're going to do that in our group. Um, and we have our lovely volunteer, Virginia, who is going to start with um, one of her markers and why uh, she's chosen that. And then maybe try to see if you can relate that identity marker with uh, being the change, which is the theme that um, we've chosen today for our workshop. Go ahead, Virginia. Okay, so I guess the first one I would say that I really have always strong, have related to very strongly is I'm an internationalist someone who's, I've always been interested internationally, I've lived and worked internationally, um, and that, and I've also um, uh, researched and taught um, internationally in global studies. So um, I guess that would be the one that would be the strongest for me. And then in terms of um, the change, I guess then the perspective that I give, um, especially in classrooms and when I do any kind of trainings is um, to try to expand people's um, um, thoughts outside of their own small, I, I live and teach in a provincial area. So try to get them to think of outside of what they're used to. I would say. That's really interesting and probably connects to many of us here in this room. <laughs> Definitely. I, Thank you so much for sharing. I was going to share. Oh, yeah, I was going to similar to what you just talked about, Virginia. So we can already start to see some of these connections. Um, I, I, I picked the one called Intercultural Bridger. That was the mark pick talk about and I, I it's just kind of like what you were talking about I think I grew up as a third culture kid and always felt like I didn't really belong anywhere but kind of belonged everywhere and some a lot of times I felt like I was an outsider observing and looking in and I think that that made me very observant and also made me think a lot about how to connect with people and then later on um, realizing that many different groups that I could connect with couldn't connect with each other. And so then it moved me towards this idea of really yearning. And that's maybe where I really want to be the change, I think, is to try to figure out how can I bring groups that are very diverse, how can I bring people together, um, connect with one another. So, um, yeah, sounds very similar to you, Virginia. Yeah, I mean, mine is, I, I'd like to add to what you, uh, both Virginia and Mariah mentioned. And uh, for me, one of my uh, distinctive markers also is being bicultural. 
And um, I grew up in Canada to Egyptian parents. So I have the Egyptian culture and the Canadian culture. And I realized that I, um, um, like when we're talking about being the change, I, I went through a lot as a child with not fitting into either place. And um, sometimes I wish uh, people were more uh, tolerant of this uh, diversity. And I try to teach that to my students in any type of course. I always find myself bringing that in about diversity and tolerance and how people are different and how we should accept those differences. And I think that stems from who I am and the experiences that I went through and trying to make um, or trying to help students see that and be more tolerant and um, more accepting to diverse by backgrounds. So it kind of, it fits into what you guys were saying as well. Can I just say, also make a comment when you, um, I think it's interesting because all three of us though, actually come from different backgrounds mm -hmm. because I was not, um, I grew up in a really provincial area. <laughs> I, I wasn't, I was given the opportunity to have international um, opportunities or, or, you know, exposure through exchanges. That's the only way in, in either uh, international students coming or as opposed to like my husband whose grandparents were Italian and his first language was Italian um, when he was growing up. And I just think it, it's interesting because, um, and that's one of the things, perspectives also that I'd like to bring is that even though you're an internationalist, you may have had different experiences and a different starting point. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that also, that understanding that even someone who grew up in a very rural, not rural, but very provincial city without having access to anything that's international. Um, you can still uh, grow outside of your, your um, small area and begin to be curious about others outside of that safe mm -hmm. place. And that's a really good um, entry point into talking about how we may end up in a similar identity space, but our pathway, our journey towards it is so different. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's almost time for other folks to come back, but I, I just wanted to know, Virginia, can you imagine using an exercise like this in your class? I actually do <laughs> because I teach intercultural communication. So wow. <laughs> um, I have something that's similar to it um, where I actually have them interview people who are um, usually who they consider not part of their culture, which can be anything like you have here, you know, who is not how you identify. And then I have, and a lot of times they're friends and all of a sudden they find out these new things from their friends that they just assume they knew, mm -hmm. but it's like a different, then they learn that you have different identities with different people that you're with. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I also think it's interesting to think about, um, like for you, Virginia, what what was it that made you interested in wanting to explore? Do you know what I mean? And connect with others and how can we kind of encourage that in other people? Right. And I was, from the time that I was really little, I was always interested. I always, when I was at the library, I'd take out the, the life books that they had, you know, pictures of all over the world and different costumes and different foods and things like that. I just was always interested more than any, I have, I'm one of five kids. I was the only mm -hmm. one who was like, this was my passion. I really wanted this. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> I have a similar experience to you, Virginia. I grew up in a small town, but I have, my grandparents came from Italy. Mm -hmm. So we had that just, you know, starting with that exposure, but then just getting interested in other cultures. And then we had a chance to learn different languages in elementary school. And that kind of expanded and increased wanting to get to know about other people. So that's interesting. It's really mm -hmm. interesting. 
Okay, I'm going to stop the recording. Uh, Heba, do you want to add anything else before we stop the recording? No, oh, I think uh, so. Uh, we're I think we're just going to bring everyone back at this point. This was really great. Thank you so.